would like my coffee mug. Do you see what it says? Ooh, hot mess. I need one of those. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks for being here tonight at Team Forever Strong's weekly team call. Today is August 10th, and I am super excited because I have one of my besties on the call tonight. I'm going to be talking to you guys um, tonight about getting vulnerable and really just kind of digging deep and leaning in when things get hard instead of giving up. So before I introduce you to her, for those of you who don't know her, I always like to start off a call just by welcoming in any of the new coaches onto our team. Welcome to our team. You guys have joined an awesome team. You are going to love everything about this. Um, so thank you for being here. And I also wanted to take a minute to just to let everybody give their shout outs to their coaches for any rank advancements that we had this week. So I think we had a couple emeralds pop this week. So if that was you, if you could unmute yourself and give a shout out to your coaches so we could congratulate them, that would be fantastic. I have one. Yay. Can you hear me? I'm on my phone. I never do this on my phone. Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, Jess, Jessica did uh, popped emerald today. She's under Matt. That's awesome. So, and then, so Matt is, Matt is diamond. Oh my God, congrats. He worked so hard for it. <laughs> that is so exciting, Courtney. Yes, oh my so God, that's when exciting. I saw her pop, I was like, I wonder if she's under Courtney or her husband. Yeah, she's that under Matt. Is, wow, good job, mama. So, yay. You guys are rocking it out. Yeah, we Congratulations. are. Anybody else? Nope. <clears throat> All right. So. Make sure that you guys, before I introduce you to Dana, make sure you guys check out our Team Forever Strong cover photo because it has a lot of really important dates that are coming up for things that are going to be happening this month. It's Team Cup Month too, guys. So this is a month where you're really supposed to give it everything you have. Put everything on the table and really get out there and talk to more people than you've ever talked to before. Connect, build relationships, invite them along on this journey with us and just get out there and start talking to more people than usual because that's our goal as a team is to try to help as many people as possible um, for this month, all right? So we have our guest speaker tonight, um, Dana. She is awesome. She's one of my besties in the business. I love her. She was just over here the, um, this past weekend with her son, Declan. Um, she's a single mom. She's an amazing mom. We're so lucky to have her. Um, in terms of the business, she is a seven-star combined coach. She is a two-time elite top 200 coach. She's an organizational leader on the leadership ladder. And she's hit success club, guys, for 42 months in a row. And it's insane, guys, right? When you hear that for 42 months in a row, she's... Except this month, struggle bus. Struggle <laughs> bus. Still... She, struggle boss, we all struggle. Even when you hear all these accolades, guys, I mean, this is going to be one of the things that she's going to talk about is, you know, you hear all these accolades with coaches who have been doing this for a long time. How many, is it three and a half years, Dana? Almost four? How long? Yeah, three and a half. Well, I, I'll, it'll be four next January. Okay, yeah, so it'll be four next January. So, you know, you hear all these accolades from these coaches and you think that they just have it made and it's easy and it's just like, oh man, if only I could be like her. Like, it's so not true, guys. Like, it's massive, massive failures falling on your face and struggles. And that is one of the things that she's going to talk about to you tonight is how to push through that when times get hard and really lean into it and dig deep versus just throwing in the towel and giving up when things get hard. So you guys hear me always talk about success club, right? And how it's the foundation for building a successful business. It's something that you have to just make non-negotiable every single month that you're helping at least three to five people get started on their journey every single month. And every successful coach that has talked that has talked to you guys on our team calls or that you have even heard speak at events or summit, whatever. If you listen to them and you hear their accolades, that is one of the key things that they all have is that consistently they have made it non-negotiable to reach that benchmark. All right. So anyways, I will turn it over to Dana. You guys are going to love hearing from her because if there's anybody who's like awesome at getting vulnerable on social media and really just being real and raw, it's Dana, and that is why, and one of the main reasons why she's had such success too as a coach, guys, is because she is open and authentic, and she's honest, and she shares her story, and every time you do that, as scary as it is, and as nerve-wracking as it is, especially at the beginning when you first start sharing these things, it is relatable to other people. Other people 
become more connected to you. And that's how you develop that trust and build a deeper bond with people. All right. So anyways, thank you so much, Dana. I will turn it over to you. I can't wait to hear from you. <laughs> Thanks, Kathy. Um, it's so funny what you said about, uh, you know, that a lot of times you hear accolades and you just think like people have it figured out that they're organized and that it's streamlined and everything's just easy. Um, and it's funny because I was driving home from the store um, tonight and I was thinking in the car that I was like, it's just so funny to me that like no matter how far you go and how much you accomplish that like if you're working with success partners like Kathy and I or other girls that I work with that are at a similar um, level in the business, everybody struggles. Nobody has their shit together. Everybody's always working on a plan B, a plan C, a plan D, figuring things out, failing forward, missing goals, resetting. Um, so don't do yourself a disservice and look at people that are where you want to go and just think it's easy or they have it figured out or they have something that you don't have. Um, because that was one of my, um, <clears throat> I think one of my biggest downfalls as a new coach is that I used to kind of put everybody on a pedestal <laughs> and I used to just walk around thinking like, Oh, these guys just have all these like skills and these like magical things that they know how to do that I don't know how to do. Right. Um, but they don't, they're just normal humans that are pretty much, you have to be, in my opinion, a little bit crazy to be successful. You have to be obsessed with personal growth. Um, because at the end of the day, like your only obstacle is you, therefore your biggest solution and your best solution is you. And, when we talk about personal development guys, like I want you to take that seriously because for the first couple months as a coach, I was like, I don't need personal development. <laughs> I don't need help. I'm just fine. Um, and it wasn't really until I started digging into that, that I started to see that I could change who I was. I could change what I thought. I could change my perceptions. I could change my mindset. I could change my resiliency. I could change the way that I bounced back to things. I could change how I looked at failure and making mistakes. Um, and that was when I really started to kind of hit the ground running because I wasn't afraid to fail anymore. And I wasn't afraid for people to tell me no, um, you know, and doubt what I was doing because I put the blinders on and I was like, if I keep growing enough, like I'll figure it out along the, along the way. Right. So, um, the first thing that I really want to share, I want to share a little bit of my story first, because I think it's kind of important to know where people have come from so that you can understand, um, that this is possible for you, no matter who you are and what you've been through and where you're coming from or where you're starting at. Um, it just really takes a you making a decision to have a no plan B um, from the get go. Because if you have a plan B in the back of your mind, whether you want to be a hobby coach and just get your shakes paid for, or you want to build a big business like, like Kathy or I have and be home full time, um, if you have a plan B in the back of your mind, you're constantly gonna have to battle self-doubts, excuses, you know, instead of having goals being non-negotiable, you're gonna find ways to talk yourself out of it, that it's not that important, that if this doesn't work out for you, you have something to fall back on. Um, and if you really commit to that no plan B mentality, it's not how is it gonna happen, it's when is it gonna happen? And it's not can you figure it out, it's just, you will figure it out if you give yourself the grace to, right? Um, so starting kind of with my backstory, um, I grew up in Western Massachusetts. Um, I lost my dad to heart disease um, and health issues when I was 12 years old. Um, <clears throat> and at that point in my life, I had a really hard time being able to deal with emotions. Um, and in hindsight, you know, I, I developed an eating disorder pretty quickly. Um, it was because I wasn't able to work through the emotions that I had. Um, it was my coping mechanism. And so I, I like to bring this up because a lot of times if you look at habits that you have, even in your business, like self-sabotaging habits that you have, those are things that you've probably carried with you your entire life that you don't know are really from something emotional that you kind of need to heal to be able to work past it, right? So in terms of my eating disorder, I wasn't able to develop a healthy relationship um, with food or with body image until I started to dig into the things that I needed to heal underlying that were causing me to manifest those things into actions on the, on the external. Um, 
And so I, you know, I started to get healthy again. I, I went to rehab. I started going to counseling. Um, and, you know, my mom's family lived in Florida. So she moved us down here right before my junior year of high school. Um, and that summer, I was in a severe boating accident. I was thrown out of a boat. I was hit by a propeller, which moved, removed the top, um, almost half of my left pelvis. Um, it's kind of <laughs> a miracle and nobody really knows how I lived through that and didn't um, bleed out, but I've had 12 hip surgeries since then. Um, and for the next like 10 or so years of my life, I struggled with chronic pain in and out of surgery. You know, once I got into college, I would, you know, start a semester, have a surgery, drop out. And it just became, by the time I was in my early 20s, I had zero self-belief. I had zero self-confidence. I just felt like life had, you know, thrown me face down so many times that I just had nothing to really push for anymore. And it was just years and years of compiling, not, you know, really feeling the hurt and the sadness and the struggle. Um you know, to where I started going down a path of not making the best choices, not hanging out with the best people. I was partying a lot. Um, I really just kind of lost myself and I, I hit rock bottom. Um, I ended up in a relationship that was, you know, very abusive. Um, and I found out I was pregnant after three months. And <clears throat> for me, that was my like slap of reality of like, Hey, <laughs> you're the one that's actually in charge of your life. And like, it's not going to be about you anymore. Cause now you're going to have a baby to take care of. And I was not ready to be a mom, um, by any means, you know, but I, I look at Declan now was a catalyst in my life and perhaps your catalyst is different and maybe you've not had one, but there is always going to be things in your life that are either giving you an opportunity to grow or it's going to give you a reason to step back further from where you actually want to go in your life. Now, Declan was my catalyst because it, it was that wake up call of I need to change. I need to get healthy. I need to deal with all of these feelings and emotions and struggles that I've tried to run from my entire life. Um, I made a post about this on social media. Actually, I think it was Sunday night. And I said, pretty much my entire life, I looked for happiness outside of myself, in relationships, in things, in people, in traveling, you know, and no matter where I went, I couldn't run from myself. I couldn't run from what I was trying to run from. Um, and that's the thing, guys, like what I said is that you are going to be your own biggest obstacle. Um, I was asked that at a Super Saturday once, what was my biggest obstacle in this business? And I said, me. My biggest obstacle was me. It was, you know, this girl, me coming into this business um, as a, you know, six months out of an abusive relationship because I chose to leave and raise my son alone when he was five months old. I moved across country. I lived above my mother's garage until I could get on my feet. Um, you know, I was a college dropout. <laughs> I had no game plan for my life. And it was, it was the best, the best thing that ever happened to me because there was nowhere to go but up. But that was a choice. It's a choice. I lived in the victim mentality up until that point in my life. And I finally said, no more. Like whatever, wherever you are at in your life right now is what you created for yourself. And that was a really hard pill for me to swallow. But it was one of the most freeing things once I really sunk that in and said, if I don't like where I'm at, then I'm the only one who has the power to change that. Um, and that was when I started this business after saying no to my coach for four months, <laughs> uh, gave her pretty much every excuse in the book. I was the girl that ghosted every time she would send me a sign up link. And I finally, um, dove into a challenge group and within a couple of days, she had me on a, a coach opportunity call. And two days later I was in a new coach boot camp, and here I am today. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, Basically what I'm getting at is that when I started and I say your biggest obstacle was you was I had to give myself permission. I had to give myself permission to no longer be the victim because for whole, my whole life, it was so easy for me to blame losing my dad, abusive relationships, physical injury, you know, all these struggles and stressors that I felt like nobody else had to be the reason that I couldn't do something better with my life. Right. And it got to the point where I said, this no longer has to be an excuse it can be a reason because if I can push myself to overcome and to empower myself, which is where my team name came from, 
Um, if I can empower myself, then I can empower other women, no matter what they struggle with all across the board, because everybody is different. But if I can show somebody that they can go from one mindset to a different mindset and drastically change the outcome of their life, then I can show other people that something different is possible for them too, right? So um, I wanted to quickly cover sharing vulnerably on social media because I feel like that's extremely important, especially with you being able to connect to um, the women that you want to work with, the people that you want to have on your tribe, and also just in terms of um, having people be responsive to you when you're networking and you're reaching out to invite to your challenge groups because um, in the beginning, and I can say that my whole life, I was so concerned with other, what other people thought of me that when the, you know, when it came to the point of coaching where I was like, okay, I can't post a picture of my workout DVD anymore, <laughs> that I was like, okay, like I have to start doing scary shit and I have to start talking about things that matter. Right. And I had all of these scary skeletons in my closet that I had worked so hard my entire life to hide. I don't want to talk about losing my dad. I don't want to talk about struggling with an eating disorder. I don't want to talk about depression, anxiety, zero self-worth, you know, why I got myself into abusive relationships. I didn't want to talk about any of that. But guys, I'll tell you that when I found the courage to start sharing those things was when people stopped scrolling and they started paying attention because I no longer was a girl that was trying to push products, but I was somebody that was trying to share a message, a message that they could do something different for themselves. And whether they related to my specific story or circumstances didn't really matter because what you have to understand about vulnerability is that vulnerability creates connection by helping people feel emotion. And emotion is what's gonna make people stop and think versus, oh, she just wants to sell me something, to being, this girl really cares, and like she struggles too, and she's been through a lot, and she gets the hard feelings. So those things that, that you're thinking about hiding, and she, Kathy, I have a list I can share with you so that I don't waste time going through it, but um, think about this, guys, because when you scroll on social media, and I want you to think back to before you were a part, a part of Beachbody, um, and you scroll your social media, you either have you know, one of a couple scenarios, you have the people that are complaining all the time, all their status updates are negative, they're stressed out, they got a flat tire, their kid is sick. It's like, you know, and I sympathize for those things, but like, it's not called vent book, right? <laughs> uh, but for me, once I started to get into a community where I saw people being positive, it can almost be the opposite to people that are struggling. They're like, God, she's always so positive. She's so motivated. It's so easy for her. She just has it figured out. Well, she's fit and she doesn't stress out. And like, that's not true because I stress out all the time and I'm a really positive person. But like, if you don't share hard things that are relatable, nobody's going to connect to you. Because it's not real if you're happy all the time. People don't relate to perfection. People don't relate to perceived perfection. People relate to real and vulnerable. Um, and so I, I would suggest that you go back when we get off this call and look at your social media. Look at the last, say, 20 Facebook posts you made. And I want to know, in any of those 20 posts, have you shared something vulnerable that would give somebody an emotional connection to you? Because if you haven't, that's something that you really, really, really need to start working on. And yes, it's going to take you courage to share those things. And yes, you're probably going to want to close your eyes and then put your phone down and run away for two hours after you post it. I'm not kidding. <laughs> and trust me, it gets easier over time. But, um, you know, I like to tell some of my coaches that it's like basically using Facebook as an outlet to talk about your life and talk about what you're going through and talk about what you're overcoming and like why it's important to you. Because a lot of times I, I'm like really horrible at writing novels of posts and like <laughs> some of my coaches are like, Dana, that's too long. And I'm like, whatever. I feel on my heart that if somebody's meant to read it, they're going to read it. Right. Um, so just put it out there and it's not your job to decide what is going to impact someone or not. It is your job to put things out there that people can connect to and be helped by. Um, and whoever is meant to see that and be touched by it will, and you have to trust that. And this is also kind of the aspect that, um, 
I firmly believe as coaches, you know, your, your only goal is not just hitting success club. Your goal is being a positive light in a really negative world. There is so much negativity and struggle and stress in people's lives. And if you can be somebody that is, you know, gives them a little glimmer of hope or a smile on a really hard day and lets them know that there is something better out there for them, then you've done your job, right? Um, and ultimately, if that leads to them opening up enough for you to help them, then you really did your job well. <laughs> it's kind of how I look at those things. So, um, Kathy, I'm going to send you this um, document um, of tips oh, for tips for creating vulnerable posts, but it's, it's simple things like, what do you have setbacks with? What are your daily struggles in your personal life or your health and fitness journey? Do you struggle with negative self-talk or limiting beliefs that you're working to overcome? Do you struggle with consistency? Do you struggle with actions matching your intentions? Do you struggle with feeling like you're good enough or that you fit in? Um, do you struggle with haters? Do you struggle with doubters? Do you struggle with people that don't support you? Um, because guys, like even if people don't necessarily relate in terms of a health and fitness journey, they're what I, what I was getting at with vulnerability is that they're going to take that emotional connection and they're going to connect it to whatever they're going through in their life. And I can't tell you how many messages I get on a regular basis of people sharing really vulnerable things about their lives with me or saying, I really needed your post today because I'm struggling with something in my life and your words helped me get through my day. And there's nothing better than getting messages like that. And that's the thing about vulnerability is you have to be vulnerable first to have other people get vulnerable back. Because if you don't start being vulnerable, you're never going to have people open up to you about things or challengers talk to you about struggles or women reach out and say that they relate to your story because you're only sharing on a surface level and that only gets so far. Um, and if you think about it, guys, we're a bit, we're a pretty big company now. Um, I like to tell my new coaches that we're cook, we're cookie cutter coaches when we're new. We all drink Shakeology. We all do personal development. We all post on social media. We all do all access. The only thing that sets you apart from everybody else in this company and makes somebody want you as a coach is your story, your words, your message, and what you have to share about how you're overcoming things in your life that they can connect to. <clears throat> and that's enough. I think about vulnerability, Kathy, because I could talk about that all night. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was perfect for vulnerability. <clears throat> you are the queen at that. <laughs> okay. Um. Okay. So the other thing that you wanted me to talk about was what? Like leaning oh, in, really digging in deep when things get hard. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. Um. Okay, by a show of hands, guys, has this business changed your life in some way, shape, or another? Or multiple ways? I hope so, because I don't think you'd be on this call otherwise, right? Okay, do you have a clear-cut idea of where you're headed with this business? Like, do you know what your end of your goals are right now? Do you know what your goals are for this month? Do you know why they're important to you? Do you know how to get there? <sighs> okay. That's the kicker because here's the thing, guys. Uh, a lot of times people set goals and then they don't actually map out the action plan of what it takes to get there, you know, in terms of really kind of reverse engineering that and breaking it down, right? Um, so you have two things. You have on one side is your purpose of being a coach is to help people, right? And if that's what you feel like your only purpose is as a coach, then you probably need to dig deeper into why you're here. Um, because on the flip side of that, you have your purpose of why you're a coach is to help people, to change people's lives, to make an impact, right? On the flip side of this, and this is what drives your business, is your why. It's your vision. And if you don't have that, when you're stressed out, when you're struggling, when, when it would be easier to sit down and watch Netflix, when you want to go out and do something, when you whatever, when you want to go to bed rather than sitting behind your computer for an hour to do, you know, invites, if you don't have this here, this why and this vision, you're not going to do it. You're not going to show up to the potential of that, which you're capable of, and you're probably going to fall short of your goals. And I don't mean that in a mean way, but I mean that even when you're the most intentional person with an action plan to get to your goals, even then you're still going to miss goals. So you have to take that seriously. And why I stress this so much is because me personally, 
Um, I know Kathy can speak to the same is that she had a very clear cut vision when she came into this business and then it expanded from there, right? So don't think that you have to have these huge crazy goals right now, but you have to have some kind of a goal that is pushing you, right? That you're working towards. And like, you really have to think about what is it going to feel like? What is, what's your life, what's your life going to look like when you achieve that? How is it going to change? How are you going to feel? You know, what are you going to do with your time? Um, you know, when you go to bed at night, how is, how are you going to feel less stressed than you do right now? If you're able to achieve those things, because you have to ideally think about what that's going to feel like for you for it to really kind of lock into you emotionally of why it's important. And so for me, um, I knew from day one that I wanted to be home and stay home full time with my son. Um, I knew from very early on that his dad, you know, his, his, I don't even call him that anymore, but he's an addict. Um, there was going to be no involvement. There was going to be no child support. And I knew I was going to do this on my own. And it literally felt like somebody kicked me in the gut every single day when I woke up and I thought about having to put my kid in full-time daycare and work two to three jobs that I hated doing and go back to school. And how the hell was I even going to afford all that to be able to do what? to go to a career nine to five that I didn't actually love every day. And, and who was going to raise my kid? That was my gut punch for me. That was what drove me. Right. And that expanded over time. Um, you know, to one day I knew I was gonna go after terminating rights. Um, and I had to be able to prove that I was financially and mentally and physically, you know, mainly financially stable enough to raise a child on my own. Right. And this business was it for me. I was like, I get to work my ass off doing what I love when I want to do it so that I can be present in my child's life. And so every single time guys, this is what I mean is you have to have this clear is that when you sit down and you don't feel like doing something or you have failed or you're struggling to hit success club or somebody quit on you. I've had so many people come in, you know, to my team that I was so excited to mentor and then they terminate and it's like crushing because you emotionally invest in people's goals. Right. But the thing is that you have to decide that no matter what you're going to be here for the long haul, no matter what, no matter how hard it gets. And this is why if you have this, why, and you have this vision, no matter what kind of stressors or struggles or whatever you're going through in your personal life, ask yourself, what happens if I don't? Because for me, <laughs> when I asked myself that question, it still gives me chills all over my body because I knew the outcome of what happened if I didn't was not going to be pretty and could impact not only my life, but my son's life for the rest of his life. And that was something that drove me to show up no matter what. Now. Fast forward to, you know, Kathy wanted me to talk about really leaning into this business when, when it gets hard. And especially when you're going through personal struggle in your life, because we see it all the time, you know, somebody's having financial issues or marriage difficulties, or perhaps you're struggling with something as a single parent, like I do. Um, and it's so easy to put this on the back burner. It's so easy to put your dream on the back burner. Because nobody is, you know, going to be pulling out your shoulder and dragging you along. Your success in this business depends on one thing and one thing alone, and that's you. And you're very fortunate to have a team like you do with leadership like you do, um, because I know Kathy um, does an incredible job with that. But guys, at the end of the day, there is nobody but you to look at in the mirror of whether you fail or succeed at this, right? Um, so last year, um, I personally was, was headed into a really nasty custody battle and we had achieved elite the year prior. That was our first year as an elite team. Um, and it, I remember thinking at the beginning of last year, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know how I can set bigger goals. I don't know how I can grow into somebody that somebody can do that, that can do this. I don't know how I'm going to balance being motivational and inspirational and, you know, rallying my challengers and staying committed to my own journey and leading a team all the while going through one of the most emotionally stressful situations in my life. And when I mean emotionally stressful, I mean like <laughs> you want to bang your head against the wall because basically your child's entire future is on the line, right? So I had to make a decision. 
And this is what I'm going to encourage you to do because I can guarantee that you all probably have something stressful in your life right now that is always something that's dragging you back a little bit. If, if you do, can I see your hand, please? <laughs> okay, so take some time, whether it's you know today, tonight, this weekend, and I want you to sit back and I want you to think about, number one, this thing that you're struggling with, this beast that you have in your life, right? Because we all have them. And then I want you to think about that why and that vision and what this means to you right here. So I knew for me, I knew for me that I would rather struggle my ass off and grow through the entire year pushing myself as hard as I could than look back on the year and feel like I wasted it and I regretted everything that I didn't do and I didn't become. Because the, the thing is that those obstacles and those stresses and those struggles in your life are there for you. They're a gift for you. They're given to you. And I 150% believe that. It's taken me a long time to shift my perspective on struggle, but Lord knows I've had a lot of practice. <laughs> um, but the thing is, guys, like last year, if I would have chosen at the beginning of last year, like I'm just going to kind of ride it out. I'm going to fake it till I make it. I'm just going to kind of skate by. This is what I reminded myself of. If you have challengers underneath you, or you have a team that you're growing, whether you have one coach or whether you have five, I want you to remember that when we say you're leading by example, people are looking not only at what you're doing, but they're looking at how you deal with things. And so for me, I love my challengers and my team so much, and I want them to accomplish everything that they possibly can. And I knew that being in that role of leadership, that if I were to step back, that if I were to pump the brakes, that if I were to give up, that if I were to act like this was something I couldn't overcome, then I would never be able to truly teach my coaches or my challengers how to overcome when life got hard. And so it became a purpose for me that was bigger than myself because at the end of the day, you know, getting up and just wanting to stay committed to my journey to stay, you know, happy and healthy and fit. It wasn't enough for me. You know, I had this driver um, at my back, but I also had this reason, my purpose of helping people that I was committed to. And that became the biggest driver for me was what would I want to see my coach do if they were in a situation like mine? Or what would I want to see my challenger do if this is something they were struggling with in their personal life? And so it became every roadblock I hit and every stressful day and every day I had to go to court and every day I got paperwork and my heart was crushed and I felt like somebody had just kicked me in the face again. I would step back, I would do personal development, I'd get refocused on where I was headed and I would forge forward again and I would pour my time and my energy into doing the best I could. And it was a really a year for me of personal, emotional, spiritual growth, but also of just really learning how friggin' resilient we are. Guys, like there is literally, I want, like look back at everything you've been through in your life up until this point and I can guarantee that probably 10 points in time, you thought, I don't know how the hell I'm going to get through this. I don't know how I'm going to make it. I'm not strong enough. I'm not capable enough. And guess what? You're sitting here tonight, aren't you? You survived. You're doing all right. <laughs> Maybe you got a couple war wounds along the way, but like you're here and you got through it. And if you look at it that way, guys, that like the, the biggest obstacle that you're going to create is when you make an obstacle out to be bigger than what it actually is. Because whether you look at this as something that's going to stop you or you look at something that's, that's going to help grow you is a choice. And the way that you feel about those things every single day is going to determine the reality that you live in. Because for me, one of the biggest parts of all of this was really learning how to retrain my thoughts and my mindset and what I focused on because it's all about perception. You can give you know, the same person, the same scenario, and the outcome ends up totally different. And why is that? It's perception. It's a choice. It is the thoughts that you put into your brain every single day that you fixate on. Um, I hope that that helps you if you have something that you're struggling with um, to learn to lean into it. 
because it is our natural tendency as humans to lean out, to lean away, to step back from things we fear, to step back from struggles, from stress, um, to really um, create a lot of resistance. And the, the thing that's beautiful is that when you release resistance and you just accept that you have to deal with what you have to deal with and that you have to go through what you have to go through, the only thing that you can change is your attitude about it, right? It's not just going to, you're not just going to magically wake up and all those stresses and those struggles are going to go away, <laughs> but you can magically wake up and decide to start looking at it differently and start acting differently and start letting it be something that fuels you to show other people how to overcome versus something that says, oh, I'm just going to fall back and I'm just going to come back when I feel like it, right? Because for me, I take leading by example extremely seriously and to the extent, you know, that you choose to do that is up to you. But I, I personally feel like if I want to give people the best opportunity to be successful, then I need to lead from the front. I need to be that light. I need to do the hard shit first. I need to fail first. I need to screw up first. I need to have the lessons first. <laughs> I need to dig into myself as a human and I need to grow so that other people can see that that's possible. Because even if you don't think that people notice it, they pay attention. People pay attention to how you deal with things, how you react to the attitude you carry, to the you know mindset that you bring to life. And I by no means mean that you have to be perfect or you have to have it all figured out um, or that you're not going to have struggle days. But guys, like you have such a huge opportunity if you have an obstacle in your path. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> is that when you push past those obstacles and you achieve things despite them, you're going to grow your confidence in yourself as a person. You're going to grow your belief in yourself. You're going to grow your belief in the potential of other people because you see the potential that lies within yourself, right? And that is a beautiful thing because you not only see that there is literally nothing that you can't get through or you can achieve given the time, given yourself the grace, giving, giving yourself the opportunity to grow, but you see so much more in other people because you'll start to see different things in different people that are connected to you and you're always going to have lessons that you can share with people. Um, and bringing this full circle back to personal development, um, I always tell my team is that personal development is not just an investment in you. Um, if you're really serious about personal development and you learn to love it, um, personal development is, is an investment in your challengers. You know, when you have a challenger that comes to you and says, I struggle with time management. I don't know when to get my workouts in. I don't know how to, you know, do X, Y, Z with the kids. Or you have a coach that comes to you and says, I struggle so much with what other, what other people think of me. I struggle so much with self-belief or with fear. You know, you have done the work and the growth with, with personal development that you're going to have something wise to tell them. Maybe it's not the perfect answer, but it's something that can help them a little bit further along in their journey or at least shift that perception for them a little bit. And that's when it really starts to get fun and really fulfilling because you really see that you have, have influence and you have impact and you don't, like I said at the beginning of this call, you don't need to be somebody special. You don't need to have anything that somebody else doesn't, you know, that, that somebody else has. You just need to become the best damn version of you the most grown version of you, the most evolved version of you, and the most relentless version of you because nothing is achieved if you are not relentless in your personal growth, in your personal journey, in your business. Um, but you have to give yourself permission to be capable. You have to give yourself permission. And I know for me, that was when everything really started to shift was that I no longer had to be the girl that had great intentions and no follow through. I no longer had to be the girl that failed at everything and, you know, let it stop her from doing more. Um, I could be the one that really flipped the script in my own life and then showed other people how to do the same. Right. So, um, if you take anything away from that, it's to call upon yourself because you are capable of way more than you allow yourself to be oftentimes. Um, and I say that from someone who used to dampen her own potential in every single aspect of my life. So I hope that helps, Kathy. No, that was amazing, Dana. Thank you so much. That was seriously such a great call. I took so many notes, guys. I'm sure that you guys did too. I saw a lot of people typing away and stuff and jotting down notes. And 
you know, like I love having speakers on the, on the call all the time because we just, we always learn new things and it's a great way to get inspired and it's a great way to give yourself just like a reality check and just hearing different things from different leaders in the company. You know, sometimes that one thing that you might hear from somebody will get that light bulb to really go on and can help you go on and change your life and change your team's life and just your entire business. But I took down a lot of notes, guys, and I wanted to kind of recap just some of my um, Kathy, favorite. Yeah. at the end, if we have a minute, I have an exercise on limiting beliefs that, are, that I want to do with you guys. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. I just have <laughs> I was a couple things. We're all about that, guys. We need to do this. <laughs> no, but I really loved how she said when she was talking, she was talking about how just like getting vulnerable on social media. And when she was talking about how important it is, when you are on social media, just by being vulnerable, getting people to feel emotion, you know? So think about that as you're writing your posts and you're sharing your journey and your story. It's different than all the other coaches on the team. None of us have the same story. None of us have the same journey. We're all unique and have a different story that we're here to share with everybody. But each time that you go to sit down to share something, Ask yourself, you know, is this going to bring about emotion in someone? That's it, really. And even if it has to take you a little bit longer to write it, you're better off taking the time to get a good quality post up where you're really sharing your authentic self and getting other people to feel it versus just, just getting up a post just to get up a post because you're supposed to share on social media every day. And that goes back to the whole piece, too, where she was talking about sharing your message versus just pushing product, you know? It's so true and that's what we teach and that's what all the successful leaders in the company teach their teams is to really truly share it. We're not selling anything we're sharing. Um, and um, so do that exercise that she said to go back through your wall, really check and look through the last 20 posts like she said and see when the last time was that you shared something really vulnerable. And it is scary guys because I remember when I first made mine and I almost wanted to throw up. <laughs> Can I tell you a funny story? I, yeah. <laughs> one of my now diamond coaches, she literally was so scared shitless to post something vulnerable that she took a shot of fireball. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm like, hey, whatever works, you what, got it you up, know, right? She, said, she sounds like my kind of girl. Hey, whatever it is, <laughs> honestly, guys, it's the people who are more, more vulnerable on social media. And this happens slowly, guys, over time, especially if you're a newer coach. This doesn't just happen overnight. Um, but those are the ones who go on to be really successful, impact a lot of lives because it builds trust, like she said, and that's where the connection starts to, to develop with people. Um, your biggest obstacle will be you. And isn't that the truth, guys? I, we have all struggled in this business. Think about it. You can always use excuses and play the victim, but the one thing that, like she said, that's going to be standing in your own way is really just you. So getting, looking, really looking at those obstacles and really looking at them as teachable moments and what can you learn about them and really understanding that they are there for a reason. You're going to get through them and you're going to learn and you're going to have massive growth each time you get through them. And you can teach that now to your team and help your coaches overcome those things because now you've already gone through it versus throwing in the towel and stopping. Um, and the last thing I'm going to share is I really liked when she talked about how, especially like when you're newer coaches, you know, there's all these coaches and you have to ask yourself, you know, what is truly going to set you apart from Dana? What's going to set you apart from me? Why would somebody want to go with you? And that is where you need to really dig in deep and share your, your authentic true story. And that will attract people to you naturally if you're just yourself. So instead of just doing like generic posts about like Shakeology and all this and other stuff, what can you share about you that people can relate to? All right. Um, and I really love too how you shared the vision, guys. It's so true, like the vision and having that crystal clear vision of what it's going to feel. It's the feelings, guys. What is it going to feel like if in two years from now, three years from now, whatever it is, you can live this life that you never thought you'd be able to live? What would it feel like? And you know, you need to do a lot of visualization with that, really sitting down and closing your eyes and really imagining yourself living out that day. That really, truly helps you. All right, so I'll stop now. Kathy, with that alone, I think 
like really requires you to dig past a lot of fear. Cause I know for me, um, one of my biggest fears has always been inadequacy my, my yeah. entire life. And even still today. Um, and so for me, when I like wanted to think about like a big vision for my life, it was like, I would hit these roadblocks of like, you can't have that. You don't deserve that. You're not capable of that. And you just, it's like, you have to kind of let those go for um, just even a couple minutes to like allow yourself to see past what that is to what you truly want. Um, mm -hmm. cause if you're doing it within your limited realm, <laughs> yeah. that, that cage that you put yourself in, you're not really gonna be able to see the full potential of what is possible for you of what you really even want. You know, you have to give yourself permission to dream. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of people have a hard time kind of getting deep with it. You know, like people get so wrapped up in, yes, you need to hit success club, but you know, they get so wrapped up in success club and, you know, let's build our team and rank that they actually don't even have a vision of where they're going because all they're seeing are all these little things, these little like shiny objects, like along the road without that vision. You, re I mean, you have to sit down and get real with yourself and really, really think long and hard about your life, like your one life that you're living right now. That's, you, you gotta, you gotta be serious about it. And then all I those was, other, yeah, go ahead. I was actually on a call with um, a guy who's a speaker from Brendan Burchard's team recently. And he, you know, started saying like, sometimes like you might have like, if say like fear, you have fear of inviting, you know, and like every time you sit down to fear, it's like you feel it in your body. Like, it's like you all of a sudden feel like cement. It's like painful to type. Yeah. <laughs> and he was talking about how like resetting your brain, it's, it's, you know, like what the, the chemicals that go into your body when you feel fear, like that shit's real, you know? And he was saying that like, you have to ask yourself, like you have to be so clear on like why it is that that's important to you. Like, why is that action important? Because if you sit down and you say like, okay, I need to go, you know, send 10 invites today and you need to start digging into asking why, like, why am I doing this? Well, what's that going to get me to? Well, why am I doing that? Well, what's this and connecting it back to that bigger picture of why it's important? Because if you can connect those dots, it's going to drive you to actually do the things that you need to do to actually get you where you're going. And I thought yeah. that was really cool. That is really cool. So true. All right. So I'm done recapping, but yeah, let's do that exercise. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, <if> you, <laughs> I'm like such a deep thinker that I think I weird people out sometimes. So just bear with me guys. <laughs> um, okay. So if you want to share, you can, and if you don't, that's fine too. But if you do want to share, can you post a limiting belief that you have in the comments and don't worry, there's no judgment. I'll even post, I, I shared with you mine earlier. My, my, one of my biggest fears has always been inadequacy. It still is. not good enough. That's the same as inadequate. I feel like <laughs> along the same lines. Okay. Thank you guys for sharing. Okay. So there's like five little steps that we're going to go through. Um, and I did this with my team not long ago. Um, because I think that it's really important for you to shed light on the reality um, that this really just is a limiting belief. Like it's not real. Like you've created that in your mind and it's because of past things that you've been through or circumstances that you've had or from comparing to other people, um, whatever it is, like that is something that you've created that's a roadblock for you right now, but it's not actually really a roadblock unless we choose for it to be right. And I can say this because I said to you that inadequacy for me has always been, um, you know, my biggest fear. And even now, you know, with a two time top 200 team, I still fear inadequacy. And, and why? Like, I know why, because I dig into this stuff about myself is that I, you know, it's like as team, my team gets bigger and as there's more coaches and there's more of you know, me to divide myself to, I always wonder, like, am I giving adequate love and attention, um, you know, and mentorship to like everybody 
to the quality of which I'm capable of and which I desire to be right. You know, but the thing is I can step back and bring truth to that is that if I'm doing my best and I'm really, you know, focusing on serving people and being intentional with my time that I just have to trust that that is enough, right? Because it's been uh, enough up until this point, it's been more than enough. So what I'm getting at is that if you can take this limiting belief and you can dissect it enough to really understand that it's not actually true, then you can start to work to overcome it. So my number one question is, is this limiting belief actually true? And that goes into the number two question is, can you be 100% sure that this limiting belief is true, as in this is a fact, it's a fact of life? And everybody should probably say no. <laughs> or I'm gonna tell you to say no. <laughs> okay, so now I want you to think about how do you feel when you accept this belief as truth? And most likely, you're going to feel worthless. You're going to feel average. You're going to feel not good enough. You're going to feel stress. You're going to feel struggle. You're going to feel fear of failure um, or fear of, of doing something bigger. Um, but it's going to be an emotional feeling and it's probably not a good feeling, right? Okay. <clears throat> now the number four, <laughs> I like this part, <laughs> is who would you be who would you be without that limiting belief? Who would you be and what would you do without that belief? And now the number five part is the kicker to really working on letting it go. <clears throat> and that is to reverse this belief. So I want you to write down or think about three examples of how this belief is bullshit or how it's not true. And my kid's asleep, so I can cuss because I have a potty mouth. <laughs> <clears throat> so instead of saying I am, and then saying this limiting belief, can you say I am not this because one, two, three, and list out three reasons that you are not that belief. And then once you have those three reasons that you're calling yourself out that this isn't true, how does that make you feel when you reject that limiting belief? Because you should feel powerful, capable, unstoppable, good enough. You know, like you're able to actually achieve the things you want to achieve, that you can grow into somebody who can do those things. But the emotional feelings, and just like I said, whatever you speak and, and the thoughts that you have to yourself every single day are what becomes the reality you have. So if you really want to shift those limiting beliefs, you have to bring truth to why they're not real. And then you need to start leaning into the emotions of what that feels like without it. Um, and hopefully that is something that if you practice this enough is going to have, you know, help you have the courage to really let that go and have that no longer be something that stands in your way. Um, and I know for me, like I said, that, that inadequacy, inadequacy is something that, I feel like a lot of times with, with limiting beliefs, um, you know, you think that at some point you're just not going to have to deal with it anymore. Like you just think like, I'm going to get to some certain point and I'm just not going to feel those feelings anymore. Right? Like you've grown so far past it that it can't reach you anymore. And like I said earlier, is that no matter where you go, it's there, no matter what you achieve, it's there and you're going to lessen its power and it's not going to be as strong and that voice won't be as loud anymore. But I know for me, I've grown through so many scenarios and achieved way more than I ever thought possible. And once in a while, I find myself in a stressful situation or I struggle or I fail at something or I make a mistake and that belief, it pops up again, right? But if you keep reminding yourself of those, th of those three things or multiple things that you just wrote down of why that belief is not true, then you can continue to surpass um, you know, that belief and continue to reject it so that it doesn't have to be something that stands in your way, but it's something that you just kind of carry along for the ride and you put that shit in the passenger seat and you just keep driving because it's going to stay there, but you're no longer going to let it take the wheel and drive for you, right? Because that's a choice. So I hope that that helps you 
um, let go of some of your limiting beliefs because I know that it's something that helps me. And I think it's important to have practices for letting go of that kind of stuff rather than just kind of sitting on it and letting it, you know, fester in your brain. <laughs> but it helps. That was awesome, Dana. Seriously, this was such a great call. Thank you so much. This is amazing. Do you guys have any last minute questions for her before we let her go? This is your chance to learn, guys. Don't be shy. The longer you've been in this business, the more crap you go through and the harder you fall and the more times you fail. So if but I only anything... fight on Wednesdays for the record, if you want to ask. What is it? You got this week. <laughs> Wait, what did you say? I said, I only buy it on Wednesdays. If you want to ask, <laughs> you guys are good to go. <laughs> I know. So much awesome stuff. <laughs> I'm reading the chat. I'm like laughing out loud. You guys are awesome. <laughs> we all have something holding us back, guys. So I hope that you guys learned something from Dana and can actually apply it and put it into place. So we love you guys and we believe in you. You guys are amazing. You're a great team. And we want nothing but the best for you guys. So thank you so much again, Dana, for taking the time out of your night and being here. I know you're crazy busy over there. Um, Kathy, one thing that I have to note in the comments, Kristen just commented that it's interesting to hear so many people say the same thing about leadership. Guys, this is the key, what we talked about in the beginning, the vulnerability, because you guys all just had the courage to share, to share a limiting belief and something you struggle with. Look how many other people on the team Team probably right now feel like okay I'm not alone in that anymore right yeah feel a sense of comfort because you got vulnerable <laughs> my point. all right I'm done <laughs> I know you know well I know Dana and I work all night long this is like when we work when we're in our element so like this is why we have so much energy everybody else is ready for bed we're like well, let's <laughs> take on the night and work for one <laughs> we're crazy all right um all right guys well thanks for being here thank you so much again Dana you know I love you and you guys have an awesome night. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys.